KITV4 News and CivilBeat.com present the U.S. Senate debate. For decades, they've been a team. Serving as your Senate has been my greatest privilege, honor, and duty. But with Daniel Akaka retiring, Hawaii's Senate team is about to change. November's race fits two opponents who've gone head-to-head -head before, and tonight they face off. Good evening and thank you for joining us for the U.S. Senate debate hosted by KITV4 News and CivilBeat.com. I'm Paula Akana and I'll be your moderator tonight. We'd like to thank the candidates for U.S. Senate for participating tonight. We have former Governor Linda Lingle and U.S. Representative Maisie Hirono. Thank you both of you. And our panelists this evening are Andrew Pereira and Catherine Cruz from KITV4 News and Chad Blair from CivilBeat.com. Now, in addition to our live broadcast, this debate is being streamed live on CivilBeat.com and KITV.com. Let's go now to the Web Center where we find KITV4's Laura Yamada. Laura? Well, Paul, as you can see here, I'm surrounded by technology because so many people want to participate in this debate. We've got our Twitter feed up, we've got our Facebook up, and of course, maybe most importantly, our live wire on KITV.com. Very easy. All you have to do is go to the top of the page there, and people have been participating like crazy already. We'd love to hear from you. We're going to take some questions and ask them of the candidates. So please jump on in, hear what other people are saying, and participate. Back to you. All right, thanks, Lara. Now, here are the rules for tonight's debate. When a candidate is asked a question by one of our panelists, she will have one minute to answer. The opposing candidate will then have 45 seconds for a rebuttal. And a little later in the broadcast, the candidates will have an opportunity to ask questions of each other. Now, before we get to questions from the panel, each candidate has 90 seconds to answer this question. Why are you running for U.S. Senate? And we begin with Representative Maisie Hirono. Representative. Mahalo to KITV and the Civil Beat for hosting this debate tonight. And to those of you who are tuning in, thank you. You're probably asking yourself, does this U.S. Senate race matter to me and my family? That's an important question. And I hope you'll listen for the differences between us. If you're a middle class person, for example, note that my Republican opponents' economic priorities are very similar to Mitt Romney's. That's because they both support making sure that our rich people, millionaires, get more tax breaks while middle class taxes will go up. Or if you're on Medicare, note that my Republican opponents' plan is exactly the same as Mitt Romney's because they will change Medicare into a voucher system, <clears throat> excuse me, and that will end up costing our seniors a lot more money. Or you may be asking yourself, why don't we create jobs and get our economy going? Note that my Republican opponent has joined with the National Republican Party to oppose President Obama's jobs plan to create two million jobs. Or you may be asking yourself a larger question. What is the best Senate for Hawaii? Will it be a Senate that is tied to a narrow Republican agenda opposing President Obama? Or will it be a Senate committed to middle class values, the right priorities? Mahalo. Thank you very much, Representative Hirono. Governor Lingo, your turn now. Why are you running for the U.S. Senate? Aloha. I'm running for the United States Senate for the same reason I wanted to represent Molokai on the Maui Council when I was 27 years old, because I believe effective leaders can make life better for people and communities. On the Council, making life better for seniors meant fixing the drinking fountain and installing ceiling fans at the Molokai Senior Center. As mayor, it meant capping property taxes so families like the Lindsays and others could afford to stay in their home on Front Street in Lahaina, even when property values skyrocketed. As governor, it meant creating a nationally recognized robotics program so that twin sisters at Waiakea High School, Carolyn and Leanne King, would major in engineering at UH Manoa. As senator, making life better means protecting Social Security and Medicare for our kupuna and for future generations. We have to continue to invest in health care, education, national security, and infrastructure while working to regain our financial strength as a nation. Two years ago, I was invited to be a founding member of the Governor's Council at the Bipartisan Policy Center in Washington, where I worked with former Republican and Democrat governors on issues important to the states and the nation. Unlike my opponent, 
I have a proven track record of working in a bipartisan fashion to make life better for the people of Hawaii. I ask for your continued trust and your vote so I can continue my bipartisan work as Hawaii's next United States Senator. Mahalo. Thank you very much, Governor. Well, now to our panel, and we're going to start with Andrew Pereira, who has a question for Representative Hirono. Mahalo, Paula. Aloha, Representative Hirono. Representative Hirono, you've been classified by some organizations as one of the most liberal members of Congress. Critics say you're a machine for the Democrats or a rubber stamp. Could you please identify a specific bill or issue where you broke from the majority of your party? It's really important that uh, we work in a bipartisan way to get things done for Hawaii, and I've done that. I'm really proud of the work that I did with my good friend Don Young of Alaska, where we saved um, Native Hawaiian and Alaska Native education grant programs. That meant about $33 million for those programs for Native Hawaiians. I also worked with a Republican-controlled uh, uh, Congress to bring $6 million more to our airports by putting in an amendment to a huge bill that uh, dealt with aviation. Uh, that's $6 million every year to the state of Hawaii. That's jobs. That's you know, infrastructure. I'm also proud of working in a bipartisan way with my Visit USA bill that would probably create some 6,000 jobs and infuse our economy with about $600 million. So unlike my Republican opponent, I don't just talk about being bipartisan. I do it. Thank you very much, Ms. Hirono. And Governor Lingle, you have 45 seconds for a rebuttal. Congresswoman Hirono has been in the majority party all the years that she was elected here in Hawaii, so she never had experience at working across party lines. Being a Republican governor with a heavily Democrat legislature meant in order to achieve the great initiatives that we worked on together to get the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative adopted, robotics education, housing for Native Hawaiians, I had to work with people of both parties in a respectful manner. My opponent has spent this entire campaign attacking national Republicans. These would be the very people we would have to work with to get something done for Hawaii. Uh, she votes with her party 97% of the time. That's not someone who's bipartisan. She never has been, and she never will be. Thank you very much, Governor Lingo. Catherine Cruz now with a question for Governor Lingo. Governor Lingo, you said you're a moderate Republican who Hawaii Democrats should support. Can you name a specific plank of Mitt Romney's platform that you do not agree with? Governor Romney and I are on completely different sides on the area of immigration. Uh, legal immigration to this country has been a part of my platform since the day I announced, and it's because our state is a, a state of immigrants, as is our nation. I'm like most people watching tonight. My grandparents weren't born in this country, and I feel that immigration is a, not just important to us as a nation, but important to our economy uh, because our birth rate has, has dropped. We need more people coming into the country. I also support young people who come here to study being able to stay in America. Uh, also, Governor Romney and I uh, disagree on how he relates to China. China is a critically important nation to our state. It's a place I've spent a lot of time, and I think attacking China publicly is not the right thing for our economy, for American companies who are doing business there, certainly not for the state of Hawaii. Thank you very much, Governor. Representative Hirono, 45 seconds for your rebuttal. The people of Hawaii should be very clear that uh, my Republican opponent is completely on the same page with Mitt Romney with regard to opposing President Obama's jobs bill, which would create some two million jobs, really necessary in this economic crisis. And she is totally on the same page with Mitt Romney on the issue of changing Medicare into a voucher system that would end up costing our seniors more money. And she is also totally on the same page with Mitt Romney on the question of more tax breaks for millionaires and billionaires. So that's not somebody who is bipartisan. That's somebody who is very partisan. And in fact, she will be one of four votes that the Republicans nationally need to control the U.S. Senate. Thank you very much. And now to Chad Blair, who has a question for Representative Hirono. Chad. Representative Hirono, good evening. Good evening. You say you would fight and you will fight to keep Social Security and Medicare intact for future mm -hmm. generations. And you've suggested fixes like raising the payroll cap and ending fraud and abuse in Medicare. But neither of these will sufficiently fund these entitlement programs long into the future. 
Are you avoiding making tough decisions such as raising the eligibility to age for a Social Security? Here's what I'll do to keep Social Security strong, because both Social Security and Medicare are not just programs to support, but commitments to our kupuna. Social Security can be kept strong for 75 years. So I disagree with the premise of your question, because by lifting the cap on, on payments into the Social Security Trust Fund, we can keep that fund going for 75 years. And I do not agree on raising the retirement age for Social Security as my Republican opponent supports because that would end up with our recipients getting less in Social Security. For Medicare, Obamacare actually extends the life of Medicare for eight years. And yes, I have three proposals for Medicare. We need to go get after fraud and waste. We need to allow for bulk purchasing of drugs. And we need to continue to focus on prevention. And my opponent would just totally get rid of Obamacare. Thank you very much, Representative. Governor Lingo, 45 seconds for a rebuttal. Um, Congresswoman Hirono continues to say that uh, my plan for Medicare Choice is a voucher program, even though she knows that's not true. A voucher is something you get in the mail and then you take it in and redeem it. Uh, that's not my idea at all. In fact, the Medicare Choice plan that I propose was first recommended by President Clinton's bipartisan commission on the future of Medicare, and then most recently the Bipartisan Policy Center under Clinton's former budget director, Alice Rivlin, also supported choice in Medicare. It's one of the bipartisan ideas that will help create competition, which will help to keep costs under control for Medicare. We also need a medical malpractice reform to both bring down the cost of insurance for physicians, to keep them in business, and to stop defensive medicine that's driving up the cost of health care. Thank you very much, Governor. And now a question from Andrew Pereira for Governor Lingo. Andrew? Aloha, Governor. Aloha, Andrew. Governor Lingle, Senator Dan Inouye has strongly criticized your campaign statements that you can work effectively with him if elected to the U.S. Senate. Are you exaggerating your relationship with Hawaii's senior senator? And if elected, how do you plan on mending that relationship with Inouye so that Hawaii residents can have confidence in their Senate team? I've had a very good and positive relationship with Senator Inouye during my eight years as governor. I think uh, one of the best things we did together was in 2005, when we worked very effectively to save the 3,500 jobs at the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. Because of how the BRAC law works, Senator Inouye was not allowed to lobby to get Pearl Harbor taken off the list, but he did introduce me at the BRAC hearing. I represented the state of Hawaii. People often forget that we won that vote on a five to four vote of the BRAC commission. That meant had one vote gone the other way, we could have lost those jobs. We worked very closely together on that. We also worked on the Akaka bill. I was able to get Republican senators at co as co-sponsors that he and Senator Akaka were not able to get previously. Uh, I know Senator Inouye, and I know he'll always do what's right for Hawaii. I look forward to working with him if I'm able to win this United States Senate race. Thank you, Governor. Representative Hirono, your rebuttal. The people of Hawaii should be very clear that should Linda Lingo be elected to the United States Senate, she will be one vote closer for the Republicans to totally con take control of the United States Senate. And that would be the loss of Senator Inouye's chairmanship of the Appropriations Committee. Make, make no mistake about it, that is the Republicans' plan in supporting Linda Lingle. Now, I have a longstanding relationship with the senator. And while my Republican opponent keeps talking about a foot in both camps, uh, it makes no sense to send two people to the United States Senate who will cancel each other's vote. And as for uh, BRAC, I think Senator Inouye has a very different uh, version of what happened there to save those jobs. Thank you very much, Representative Hirono. We're going to go back to our panel, Catherine Cruz, with a question for Representative Hirono. Representative Hirono, federal spending in Hawaii is probably going to be significantly reduced next year, whether it's through the automatic budget uh, cr cuts known as sequestration or a different approach that Congress may choose. Assuming that no deal is struck during the lame duck, dump, duck session, and if you are elected, what areas would you cut? Please be specific. 
The Budget Control Act, which brought us sequestration, was a very difficult compromise, bipartisan compromise that was supported by Senator McCain, by uh, Paul Ryan, and others. And it was a very tough compromise, but we did it because otherwise the economy would have gone over the cliff, the loss of hundreds of thousands of jobs. So, yes, we're going to need to address sequestration. We need to do it in a balanced way. We're not going to do, uh, balance our budget or take care of our deficit by cutting, 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 which is what the Republicans want to do. And I'm really shocked to learn that my Republican opponent has said that she would not have voted for that Budget Control Act. She would have joined the extremists in the House, uh, like Michelle Bachman, who were perfectly willing to send the country over the economic cliff. I think that's one of the most irresponsible things that I have ever heard from Linda Lingo. So rather than going in that direction, I voted for that bill to save our country, literally. Governor, 45-second rebuttal. Congresswoman Hirono made a mistake when she voted to go along with a massive cut to military spending here in Hawaii that was required under sequestration. She should have realized that a cut here in our state meant so much more. It was so much more devastating than in another state because of the percentage of our economy that is reliant on the military. This $50 billion cut to defense spending in the country is going to hit Hawaii harder than almost anywhere else in America. And there are some times when you just shouldn't compromise, bipartisan or not. This was a wrong decision to make. She should have stood up for the people and the state of Hawaii. Thank you very much, Governor. We're going to go now to Chad Blair, who has a question for the governor. Good evening, Governor. Good evening, Chad. It seems clear that the September 11th attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya, was a planned terrorist strike, not the result of a spontaneous demonstration. How should the U.S respond to this latest provocation? I think it's important uh, in the area of national security to make certain that the country comes together in these kinds of times. Uh, this was a, a preventable uh, situation, likely, because there was a request made for additional security there in Benghazi. I feel sad for our ambassador and for his family but America should have recognized, and the State Department should have recognized, that this was a very volatile area. Uh, national security is an area that Hawaii has to be extremely concerned about as well, because we are in one of the most volatile parts of the world. I know a lot of attention tends to be focused on the Middle East, uh, on Libya, but in fact, the Asia-Pacific region is the site of the largest military buildup on the planet. Thank you very much, Governor. Uh, Representative Hirono, your rebuttal. What's happening now with regard to the investigation of what happened in Libya is a uh, commitment to make sure that we find out exactly what happened so that it, this kind of tragedy doesn't happen again. This is an area of the world, the Middle East, where we can't afford to shoot first and ask questions later, which is what happened with uh, Governor Romney. So, this is not an issue that should be politicized. It is being investigated. We are going to get to the bottom of it, and we need to make sure it doesn't happen again. But this is an area of the world where intelligence, facts before we speak, are important. Thank you very much, Representative Hirono.